Right, welcome back. This is Giovanni, also known as CryptoJo11 on Twitter. Um, and welcome to the second part uh, of this uh, tutorial to set up a Cardano stack pool on Raspberry Pis. We finished uh, on the previous uh, episode in just uh, getting warmed up and uh, basically update the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in particular, to update the firmware of the Raspberry Pi to the latest version uh, that is done in a very, very, very uh, smooth way. And this allow us to, mo to boot the Raspberry Pi uh, from uh, an SSD uh, drive, that is the, 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 this one. The reason why, again, we are using an SSD drive is because uh, combining it to the USB 3.0, we can um, enjoy four times a faster I.O. on disk. And this is crucial with the, the Cardano uh, node because it does a lot of I.O. And if we don't want to risk to miss any block and slow down our block producer node, uh, we need to um, take advantage of every single um, um, technique and trick we can do. Uh, because the Raspberry Pi, of course, is not a high-end uh, expensive PC, but is um, a device of uh, limited uh, resources. So we are now ready uh, to connect the SSD uh, drive to the Raspberry Pi and do the necessary configuration to um, install Ubuntu, the operating system on the SSD, uh, tweak a little bit the configuration so that the Raspberry Pi will attempt to boot from the SSD instead of the micro SD. And once that the configuration is done, we will shut that down, we will shut the, uh, the Raspberry Pi down, remove the SD card and attempt it to boot it up again and see if we can manage to boot it straight away from the SSD so that we don't have to maintain two different things, the micro SD with the operating system and the SSD with everything else. We just want to keep everything as fast as possible. So if we go down now um, to the different camera, I'm going to be showing you, uh, this is exactly where we left it at, uh, just in the previous episode. Uh, the power is still on, uh, the Pi is on as well, doesn't matter whether or not it's on or off, um, we don't really care, uh, because we can plug the SSD straight away to the Pi, even when the Pi is on. So what we're going to be doing, and you can see this is the SSD drive. On the front, there is the uh, SATA2 uh, connection. And this is where we're going to be plugging the cable that I'm going to be showing to you. Um, at the beginning of this tutorial, there will be, uh, I don't know if you found it already, but there is a list of all the components you need. And this is the converter from SATA2 to, to USB. You see that also this one in front is blue. This is um, a signal that this is USB 3.0. So let's proceed now and to uh, connect all the things. Um, there is a little dent here and you have to make it uh, map with the dent here, match with the dent here. Uh, just slot this one in, apply just a little bit of uh, power. You don't need too much. And then uh, I'm not gonna fidget too much with the Raspberry Pi. But as I showed you earlier on, there are two blue USB blue ports that are in the center. I'm gonna plug this one again. Doesn't matter whether or not the Raspberry Pi is on or off. And I can do this one while it is on, and I'm gonna plug it to the top one, on the top. And we're basically already golden. So what we're gonna be doing now, and the SSD, sorry, is a little bit off camera. I'm gonna move everything a little bit up so you can see that it's everything plugged. This is still the Ethernet cable. This is still the power cable that is going to my uh, power adapter. We are now ready uh, to SSH again onto the Raspberry Pi and start our configuration. So this is um, the project I'm following. It's basically um, an open source project on my um, organization, GitHub organization called Speedwing and the project is called the Cardano Staking Pool Edu. Um, here is uh, the URL that you can find in the description of the video. So there are lots of things here, but our entry point is going to be the README. Uh, you will notice that this one has already changed from the previous episode because I cleaned up the episode number one and now I prepared episode number two, that is the step that we're gonna go through uh, now. 
The title is simply is uh, uh, simple: flash the SSD drive and install Ubuntu uh, 20.04. The reality is that we will also update this configuration so that we will be able to boot from the SSD and forget about the micro SD forever. So let's click on this one and let's go through the docs. So boot from the SSD. Um, so I already mentioned that, uh, that the key thing of the SSD is that it's much faster. So what are the steps we will have to go through? And there are basically three big steps. The first one is flash the SSD drive with Ubuntu. We will have to erase the content first so that we know that we are starting from a clean slate. Then we will download and install Ubuntu. And then we will do a little bit of uh, a few simple steps uh, that if you have to Google for them, it's going to take weeks. Um, but I've done the work for use, so you will just have to do these 10 steps one after the other um, and then we're going to be golden. So update the boot configuration with new, newly fresh flashed SSD and um, I'll explain you later on but there is a little, little thing that needs to be done. We can't just boot straight away from the SSD because the um, Raspberry Pi can't read compressed kernel so we will have to uncompress it and add additional files for to the operating to the firmware in order to boot. And the last thing that we have to do is just update the, the BIOS of the um, uh, Raspberry Pi. Usually with an ordinary computer you just do press a magic sequence of buttons whenever you boot your laptop or computer, workstation or whatever in <laughs> here there is no such thing. We just have to uh, do this from the command line. But without further ado, let's get straight into this. So the first thing that we have to do, and we've already done it, is to plug the SSD into the Pi. Uh, be careful, be, being careful to, uh, to, to use the SATA, the USB adapter, and to put into the blue port, because the Pi is much faster. If it wasn't on, turn on the Pi. And then what we have to do is to issue the command lsblk. This is going to basically make a list of all the devices connected uh, to the Raspberry Pi. So let's switch to our console. So at the moment we are outside the Pi and now this is the IP that we've discovered in the previous session. So if you don't know how to find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi on your network, just go to the previous uh, episode and this is gonna be teaching you how to do that. So the u dash l pi, this is l is where the letter but is for user and pi is the name of the user. And if you haven't changed anything, the password is raspberry. I hope I typed it properly. No. Yes, we are now in. So this is at the beginning. This is exactly how we left it earlier on. So what we're going to be doing is lsblk. So what is the result of this command? This command is telling us first of all, let's start from the things we know already. This is the SSD, this is the micro SD card. This is the one that we flashed with the, at the beginning and this is our boot and this is where Raspbian, so the Ra uh, Raspberry Pi operating system that we are currently using, is mounted and is working. And then we have a new drive that is the SDA and this is the type of typical notation of a drive that is mounted on USB. The size in this case is 223, uh, 223 gig. So the next, let's go, we know that we have the drive, we don't know whether or not the drive contains any data, but because we want to do this uh, safe, we just want to erase everything. So if you're using SSD, just be sure you don't have any data that, uh, oh Jesus, I destroyed all my uh, pictures of my wedding. You don't want to do that, don't tell the wife. So let's go back to, and if you are the wife, who cares, it means that you didn't enjoy the day, and just even tell to the husband. Anyway, um, so, we have issued the LSBLK. Um, this is the typical result you will see. Um, now the next step is to erase the SSD. And this is very, very simple. We have to issue the sudo that allows us to assume uh, super user permissions. This is the command to basically erase everything on the drive. And my drive is already empty, but I don't care. I'm going to be doing this again uh, as, a, as a demo. So let's proceed anyway. All the data will be destroyed. Um, so and we are doing this now. This is gonna take a few seconds, not too not too long. This should be relatively fast, under a minute probably. Um, so just bear with me live while this thing is going on and we're done. So if we do LSBLK again, it's exactly the same 
um, thing as before. So what we're going to be doing now is download um, the latest version of the Ubuntu operating system um, for um, Raspberry Pi. This is a specially uh, baked image for Raspberry Pi, but still is a full-blown installation of Ubuntu 2004. It is the latest, the latest long-term support. So let's 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 use it. This is gonna take a while, and will mostly depend uh, on your uh, internet connection. In my case, it's gonna be um, nine minutes. So I will possibly stop talking and fast forward this one until it's done. I'll see you in a snap of the fingers. Cool, the download is over. So let's check what's the next um, command we have to issue. So what we have to do is now um, basically flush the SSD drive with uh, the operating system, the operating system that we've just download, downloaded. So this is the co command, I'll just copy it and I'll run it. Um, here it's basically exploding this archive on the fly with the xzcat and then he's using the dd command to basically flush the dev sda drive uh, bs if i'm not mistaken is the amount of data it's uh, trying to write at any given time so it should be 32 megabytes per mega something megabytes probably um, per uh, transfer the sda has to be the same uh, device ID that we've discovered earlier on. So in my case it's SDA, but someone else may have seen uh, SDB uh, if you're using something else that is not a Raspberry Pi, it could be Rock Pi. Uh, but depending on the USB slot you may have used, you may have a different thing. So SDA, SDB, SDC or something. In this case for me it's SDA here that I've discovered with that last BLK and it's gonna be the same here. Also in this case, once I enter the command, this is gonna take a little bit of time and differently from the, the cool download, there is no progress bar here. So you may think it's a stock, but well, in reality, this thing is actually going on and progressing. This is also the reason why I brought, I brought wait, 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 yeah, no, nothing is printing on the terminal, wait, oh, it's done. So even in this case, I'm gonna pause the video and I'll see you just in one snap of the finger. And here we are. Now the um, the drive has been flushed, so we know that uh, uh, something has happened. So let's do again lsplk and let's see what happened. So all of a sudden we see that uh, the SDA drive has been split now into two parts, an SDA1 and SDA2. And basically uh, what happened is that in this compressed archive there is that we've downloaded, there is like a, an operating system. What we've done, we just took this one and we slapped into the SSD. Um, and it's ready to be used. Uh, unfortunately, as it is, we just can't access this thing. In, uh, in, in the Linux, uh, Unix uh, world, in order to access these devices or partitions, we have to mount them onto the current file system. So let's go back to the instructions and um, let's see what we have to do so i'll just very briefly exp uh, explain what are those steps that we can just like copy everything and slap into the terminal and do them all but rather what i'm going to do is i'm going to very briefly explain and then i'm going to do one by one so that we know what we are doing so the first thing is that i'm creating a folder here uh, uh, known also as a mount point slash mnt mnt stands for mount is basically what is commonly used to mount external devices, hard drives, CD-ROMs, whenever we were using them, etc., etc., or even network file systems. In this case, I'm just calling it boot because this mount point that we're, uh, this device that we're mounting is gonna be like the, the future boot of the SSD. And so this is the way of creating it. Then I am actually mounting it. Uh, of course, you only need one of the two sudo. 
I'll update the configuration, I'll ditch one of the two. So what I'm actually doing here is now I'm mounting this SD1 device on the file system. And so basically this is gonna give me the possibility of moving, changing directory into this directory and see the content. And the next thing that I'm gonna do is to check out the Raspberry Pi firmware project. This, in this project uh, in GitHub, basically we're gonna be finding and using some additional files that are required by the Raspberry Pi in order to boot and launch the Ubuntu um, operating system from the SSD. And then there is a chain of commands uh, that are basically related to those uh, changes and additional files that needs to be mounted. Um, it needs to be changed or modified on the SSD. So I'm changing directory into boot, I'm copying all the dot files all the files with that extension and all the files with the elf, elf, elf extension into the boot folder. Then another thing that is done here is that the firmware of the Raspberry Pi is very tiny and it can't read or access compressed kernels. So in this command, I'm basically exploding the kernel into an unexploded version. I'm initially doing this in a temporary folder and then I'm copying it into the actual actual folder. Once that this, this is done, actually, let's, uh, let's start with this. So, uh, and then the step eight will do that later on. So from the console, we just starting issue the comments. And sorry, I forgot to do this. Um, I tested this earlier on, so the folder already exists. So let's, uh, let's pretend it, it wasn't there. Like, just ignore me for a second. So I'm actually deleting it, sudo. <laughs> right, so let's start from scratch, creating the folder, mounting the device onto the folder. So that means if I'm going cdmt boot, I can actually list the file that are contained. And these are basically the file as created by the, um, what's it called? the um, Ubuntu distribution that we've literally just downloaded. So the next step that I'm gonna do is to uh, in, uh, download, check out, clone the project firmware from uh, the um, GitHub. This is gonna take just a few seconds. So we're gonna be waiting. And once, uh, once, the, the, che che once the clone of the project is done, and we will proceed with copying um, the required files from this project into the SSD. The good thing about this, uh, this process is that we only have to enable the SSD drive uh, once. And once that we wrap up with this uh, process, basically what happens is that every single time you reboot, unplug, power goes off, and you turn your Raspberry Pi back on again. It will boot straight away from the SSD card. Also, in, uh, in the last step of this uh, episode of the tutorial, what we're gonna be doing, as, as I was showing you earlier on, is that um, because whenever you issue an update, an apt-get update, and I'll show you this later on, uh, whenever we boot from the SSD card, there is a chance that you're gonna be downloading a newer version of the kernel, the kernel that you will download is still a compressed kernel. So we need to um, add an extra step as a hook uh, called in jargon, uh, as a post installation, post upgrade hook for the kernel, where basically if the kernel is really updated, it's also automatically exploded so that uh, the next time that the Raspberry Pi reboots, it will actually find the kernel there and ready to be used. And you will not have to go and do uh, Zcat every XZ or Zcat every single time because it's gonna happen that you'll forget, reboot your Pi and it just doesn't start. And then Jesus, where is the SD? My SD card again, and where 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 were the instructions um, to boot again? Uh, I'm actually surprised how long this is taking. Um, despite using the depth one, that is a shallow clone, uh, it's still downloading hundred and. 20 megabytes of uh, data. So just a little bit longer 
and we should be there. Number of objects is basically being reached, explode, and there we go. So in the meantime, that uh, the last few steps of the clone is done, I'm gonna just copy the old uh, blob here. This is again just copying required files, explode the kernel into an, un uh, an uncompressed kernel, and then just copy it around so that it can be then be used on the next boot of the Raspberry Pi. So I just did an ordinary copy, uh, Command C or Control C if you're using uh, Linux or Windows. And then in whichever, I think, yes, in whichever folder you are, you can just paste everything and this should do the trick for you. A little bit more patience and there we go. This only should take like a couple of seconds. Do, 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 do. Boom, and this is done. So we can check that everything has been copied if we go in MNT put, and then we issue ls dash lart, that is basically ordered by a number of things, one of which is the date. And as you can see, these are all the Today is March 26th and it's uh, 10.21, an epoch has just finished, we just entered the last epoch uh, before the deep param goes to zero, so uh, like pretty intense days, uh, historical days for the blockchain. But anyway, let's go back to our stack pool here. So these are the elf and dot files, and then here is the uncompressed VM Linux. So yeah, it looks really like we've done what we had to do. So let's go back to our home folder and then now here there is a little bit here there is a little bit of a, a tricky part. So I'm not gonna do I am a VI user. I don't know if you know what VI is, but it's like a command line editor. Um because we're using Linux, that's what we're gonna be using in this tutorial. If you do like VI, you have to use nano or whatever else. I'm not gonna tell you how those editors work. So I invite you, if you're not comfortable using those tools, to just pause the video here, just find a guide somewhere, just learn very quickly how to use those editors, and then come back. Um, I use VI, I'm gonna be telling you what I'm gonna be doing, and the comments that I'm issuing, so you can copy me while I'm doing this. Just be extremely careful, I'm gonna be slow. So what we really wanna do is change the content of this file, that is the config.txt. So this config.txt has different options for different versions of the Pi. We just don't need the Pi 4, Pi 2, Pi 3 or all, we'll replace all of this with a new blob, that is this one. So copy this blob and then issue the VI mount, actually we're gonna be doing this first, copy, paste and enter. And now this is what we're seeing, before doing anything else, just take the new blob that you wanna, that we want to slap into the config.txt. So now back here, you can use the arrows to move up and down and then get here and then press the escape button on top left of the, of the keyboard. And then you have to press a number of times DD, twice the letter D, like diamond, like diamond hands. And every time you press it twice, a line disappear. Sorry, I have to update the documentation again because I forgot something. I have to do sudo. Definitely, uh, if you're following the documentation, this will be fixed. So just go back out and, and issue the sudo again. As I said, go back down here and then go dd, 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 and a number of times until we get here, and then we go slower and we go dd, dd, dd. Then at this point, we press escape button again, top left corner, ask, and then we press i for insert, and then command V or control V that is basically paste. And then we give it an enter, boom. So this is exactly what we have to do. Then we press escape again, and then we do colon Q, sorry, colon W Q exclamation mark. That basically means write and quit and just do it. And we did it. So if we do cut, that is basically show me the content of mnt boot config txt this is exactly what we pasted 
Let's go back into the file again. And this time we'll go with the VI without the permissions, right? Because I didn't say what happened. Now, if I start to pretend to write, I get a warning and say, changing a read-only file, you see bottom left here. So assuming that you're not, well, now we have to get out of this file, right? Or assuming that uh, you uh, screwed up something and you issued a change that you don't want to persist or something, you're unsure of what you changed and you just want to get out, revert all the changes and go back to square one. So the original file. You press escape, then you press column, Q, exclamation mark. This basically means get out of here, don't save anything. And if by any chance you start to, you screw up with this and you say, oh Jesus, I pressed too many letters, just press a number of times ESC. And then do that again, column, Q, lowercase Q, and ESC. It's gonna bring you here again. So we can definitely see that we haven't changed the file and it's still the same as before. Right. Another step is done, we go to the next section. This is the second to last step uh, before we are actually ready. And so this is the last step that we have to do uh, before we are able to reboot from the SSD card, but there will be one last step we have to do in order to then uh, completely wrap up this section. So what is left to do now is to configure the BIOS to boot from the SSD. What we have to do is to sudo this one this way and we have to set you'll show it's going to be clear in a moment uh, what that we have to replace this line from the value that is in the configuration with this value so let's copy this bad boy and let's go here and paste it now the editor here is exactly the same as before and that's vi so we move with the cursor and then we go to this place. You see there is a 0x1, and we want to replace it with F41. So F41. So we just press, we move on the character 1, we press I, and we go F41. It's already there. So ask, colon, bright, Q, and go. So now it's telling us, and you can see that here is printed again the value, the value that we wanted. So we just double check that that's what we wanted. 0xf41 is exactly what we wanted. So let's read what um, this thing is telling us as if you want to cancel it. So if you made a mistake, that's what you have to do. If you're actually happy with what you've done, we are now ready to reboot. So we, we will have to reboot this thing twice. The first time to make the changes applied, and the second time we will forcefully shut down the Pi, remove the SD card, cross our fingers, and reboot the Pi. So what we're going to be doing is sudo reboot now. This is going to just throw us out, but the reboot will actually deploy this change into the Raspberry Pi. You will see now that uh, if I switch to the different camera, excuse me, Bear with me one second. Unfortunately, the lights are not very visible, but the reading and writing light is blinking, so it's basically uh, working. And the reboot from S from micro SD at this moment in time. Um, so let's just wait a few seconds and then we'll try to SSH into Yoast again. It's ready, Raspberry Pi, Raspberry is the password. We're back in again. So let's just very quickly check that uh, uh, the configuration is correct. Um, I think it was okay. Is this enough to do so? EPROM config, there we go. This is the value. So we just entered the RPI EEPROM config and it's going to be basically telling us what's the current configuration. And uh, yeah, uh, this worked. I'll just very briefly go back to mount, boot, and I'm going to be showing, okay, this has been unmounted, of course, so we'll have to remount it again. Um, so I'll go into documentation, I'll go scroll up. I'm going to take my sudo mount again. gonna be writing this one here again cd mount boot there we go config is here the linux is here uh, 
just do a quick cut config txt this is exactly what i wanted there we go at this point we can finally 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 issue sudo shutdown now basically what we're going to be doing we'll wait for the pi to turn off and we will wait for the pi to turn off okay there is only the red light on so this means that uh, the pi is off the green one is off and here there is my micro sd card i'm gonna just basically pull it out and it's here i'm gonna just put it back into the adapter that i have for the micro sd to sd and now i can't remember which are the two pins here that i have to plug in order to restart a raspberry pi so i'm gonna use a, a brute force approach unplug the power count to three and plug him back in and now let's see if we are lucky enough that uh, we are able and lucky to start this from ssd The first boot, it takes a little bit of time um, because what's basically happening is that uh, Ubuntu starts and basically realizes that he's in a, um, uh, it's not using all the space available on the SSD, SSD card. So basically it's expanding the partition in order to use everything. So this, things, this thing literally usually takes only uh, a few, um, only, a few seconds so i'm gonna give it like the best part of a minute and then i'm gonna switch into the um, console again so we are now ready to go right so the ip address should it should remain the same um because the router believes that this is exactly the same raspberry pi as before despite the fact that the operating system has changed the router doesn't know that so the ip will stay the same now I expect that if, first of all, the username is changed from Pi to Ubuntu. And then the first time that we successfully, um, that we successfully SSH into the, 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 the Pi, it's gonna ask us to change the password because this is gonna have the default username and password and it is Ubuntu Ubuntu. So for safety reason, Ubuntu is gonna ask us to, to change the password. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just to set Raspberry as it was before, but the username will be different. So if I do like this, I will go like Ubuntu, and then I'll press enter. But I'll, 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 I'll inform you that as soon as I do this, I will receive an error by my SSH agent that says I'm connected to the same IP address, but the signature is changed, of course, because we changed the operating system. So what I will have to do, and just to be sure, I'll do this first, there you go, the error is here. So what we do is that because we know that we changed, so basically what he's saying is that there is a possible man, man in the middle attack, right? Um, possibility of man in the middle attack. We know that this is not the case. I only changed the operating system. This happened to us earlier on as well in the previous episodes, nothing to be worried about. So what we're gonna be doing is that we go into the known host and we do a nice, uh, I don't know if a VI is enough. I think VI is enough. We only go to the latest uh, line where is 192.168 what you have to do you scroll to the bottom double d and the line is deleted then as usual ask call w q exclamation mark and we're golden we press up a couple of times with our arrows the command is here we go for ubuntu and now it says ah all good do you want to add this fingerprint do you want to trust this operating system we go like yes and now we have to enter the password that is ubuntu now it says i'm gonna second now you have to change it. So the, and it goes like, give me the, the current password and then for twice repeat the new password. So I'll go like Ubuntu again, and then I'm gonna like Raspberry, and then Raspberry again. It's gonna throw me out, and then I can log back in again. Rasp, Jesus, I can spell Raspberry, and I should be in. Boom. Fantastic. So we are finally into our Raspberry Pi, no micro SD. This is a paramount moment. We still have to do one last thing that we're gonna be running in a moment, but I just want you to realize that we are now running the Raspberry Pi on an SSD in the possible fastest way known um, for Raspberry Pi. This is really, really important because from now on, it's all downhill. We've done the tricky bit. 
congratulations there is one last step that we have to do and we will do it in just one minute stay with me and we're back now uh, i'll just double check something into the configuration uh, and into the documentation so that uh, we can finally wrap up this episode that is going to be possibly the uh, one of the biggest one and a little bit tricky as well so let's go back to uh, if I refresh the documentation we we'll go back to the projects and then we go to the docs uh, since I was here I also fixed the double sudo here sudo sudo and then I've added the sudo here that was missing and now we're ready to install the auto decompress kernel this is the one last bit that I was talking to you about and um, basically um, whenever you do a full upgrade of your operating system uh, there is a chance that the new kernel is installed but you will have to automatically decompress it or um, uh, or basically next time you reboot the raspberry pi it won't work so the script is part of this uh, of this project i'm going to show you quickly where it is very rapidly it's in the misc miscellaneous and here is the the, the script is very long i took it from the official uh, raspberry pi um, uh, project um, i will not go through that one but i may possibly uh, put the link of where i took it from so just to show you the authenticity of the um, script go back to the documentation we're going to be basically checking uh, cloning this project that is the first step uh, so we go on in our own folder and then we clone shallow this project and this is gonna, what I'm going to be doing now this should be much much faster than the previous and then basically we're going to launch this script I haven't done this one before so bear with me if there are errors and I think let's see if this Um, Boto boot firmware auto decompress kernel. There it is. Cut auto decompress kernel. And this is what I think it's required. Yes, I think the script it fails at the beginning because it's trying to remove files that is not there, but it doesn't matter. And then it creates the new one. Fantastic. Congratulations, I can't believe we did it. And um, I can't believe we did it. Like, uh, we have finally uh, completed the uh, preliminary work before being finally able to start to build our Cardano node. And um, what this means is that your Raspberry Pi now is, uh, is fully functional and is self sufficient. It means that we will not need the, the micro SD anymore. The SSD is the only drive that we're gonna, ever going to be using and it's the fastest possible. If we update the uh, Ubuntu, this should actually be enough. Uh, and even if the new kernel is installed and we turn it off and turn it on again, it will just boot and will not give us booting issues. So now that we can do that, we'll uh, execute the last command because we're basically now free to update because the um, operating system uh, uh, that we've downloaded, it can be like a couple of weeks old and there could be new uh, upgrades. Uh, what we do is we can finally just run our uh, actually I should switch camera sorry otherwise you won't be able to see what I'm doing uh, there we go um, I just went to copy this line it is up to get update and up to get this upgrade this is gonna take a little while as well so this is the line and we right this is absolutely fine if anything like this happens um, sorry I should have put really sudo to get update and sudo I will have to upgrade again the documentation if you receive another error that says I can't do this uh, uh, there is a lock in place uh, another upgrade is going uh, you just don't be worried um, the uh, Raspberry the Ubuntu has uh, some uh, critical automatic update then uh, may kick in while you're trying to do the upgrade uh, so just don't be worried just wait 20 minutes 30 minutes that this automatically updates are done just issue the up update again you'll be fine so this is basically updating all the things 
and I'm gonna temporarily pause the video because I wanna just go through this first upgrade and ensure that everything is fine and then I'll see you in a snap of a finger. Right, that was actually much faster than I thought and uh, uh, just a few minutes ago I started the upgrade and this is basically how I finished. So you can see that uh, the last little bit is exactly the um, post hook of the um, that was just installed. So as you can see, it's decompressing the kernel here and with this uh, with this uh, green logo. So all that we all that is left to do now is test that uh, I'm not a liar. And if I shut down uh, or reboot the Raspberry Pi, there will be the latest o uh, uh, kernel as well as the Raspberry Pi is still able to launch. So let's let's do it and let's see what happens. Sudo reboot now. Finger crossed, I'm really nervous because that's one thing I haven't I haven't tested before shooting this episode. So um, yeah, a little bit nervous. Uh, I can see the the SSD bolt uh, light blinking. It looks good. It looks good. Let's go SSH. Please prompt for password. Please prompt for password. Yeah, yeah, this is not looking good. Oh, yes. Yes, we are in. <laughs> that worked. I'm a little bit surprised myself, but that actually worked. So co congratulations to you. Congratulations to me that I've done this after six months that I haven't done that before because my cluster is now all nicely set up. And you can see here a little bit of nice information as well. The system load is 2.6, but most importantly, we have also the temperature of the processor that is actually really flipping high. Um, because probably like in the last few minutes, this thing has been working a, a lot. Um, straight away also the usage of the root folder. We only have one is 1% 1 of the 219 gigabytes available on the, uh, on the SSD on the Raspberry Pi. So this is all good. So we can finally wrap up for this episode. Really congrats if you got this far. I really hope I didn't scare you with all that VI malarkey. And uh, right, it's very late as well. It's about time to go to bed. Thank you very much again for following me. I never said this episode. I'm only going to say that now. I am a stack pool operator of the um, Easy One, Easy Staking Pool, Tigger Easy One. If you like this content and if you're having fun following this thing, um, I would really, really appreciate if you would delegate to my pool. Um, and uh, show appreciation for what uh, for, for what I'm doing. Um, it, it costs nothing because you will still earn your rewards, but uh, you will help uh, me grow in my pool. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you very much. I'll see you on the next episode. And uh, good luck.